Today's lesson is the great shoe debate: Should shoes be worn indoors? Hi everyone, I'm Mike, and I'm Roger, and today we're going to be talking about shoes. Okay, shoes, of course, are very important in our everyday lives. We can't really survive without them. True,、be、but very、uh, painful. It would be if、yeah. you don't mind walking around barefoot all the time in the middle of the winter. That would be quite uncomfortable. But、mm. specifically, what we're talking about today is whether or not you should take off your shoes when you enter someone's house. Absolutely, this is something that people will notice. There are some different cultures and traditions if you travel around the world. I think, for my part, I've always lived in countries that are shoeless indoors, indoors shoeless cultures. But most of the places I've lived, it's polite. It's expected that you take your shoes off. Off at the front door. Of course, here in Taiwan, it's very much the tradition. Most people wear slip-on slippers or sandals inside their home. And where I'm from in Canada, I would largely blame the cold weather and the snow that we get most of the winter for being the reason why you would always take your shoes, or more accurately, your snow boots, off every time you came inside the house. And I know you're from a, a colder part of the United States as well, Roger. So is that pretty much the tradition for you too at home? Yeah. During the winter, of course,、mm. you were expected to take off your snow boots. Yeah. But at other times of the year, people would wear their shoes indoors, and it was very、mm. unusual for people to actually take off their shoes when entering someone's home, or it would be very unusual to ask someone to remove their、mm. shoes when they came into your home. So I think、uh, the USA is one place where you typically wear your shoes inside, but of course here in Taiwan, you will remove the shoes,、mm -hmm. as you will in Japan and other Asian countries. As well, but still, this is up to debate. It's the great shoe debate. Should shoes be worn indoors? Let's try to answer this question right now. Let's begin by listening to the first part. The great shoe debate: Should shoes be worn indoors? Should we remove our shoes upon entering a home? For some, the answer is a resounding yes, while for others, the best approach is far from straightforward. Practices vary from location to location, even within a single country. 大家好，第一部分介绍形容词 straightforward， 它的意思是简单易懂的或是人坦率的。例如 ，The manual's instructions were clear and straightforward. 手册的指示明确又简单。或者 ，As a diplomat, I cannot be as straightforward as I would like. 作为一名外交官，我无法像我想要的那样坦率。All right, so here we are with the first part of our article. Let's get into the great shoe debate: whether shoes should be worn indoors. How do you feel about this? What is the culture where you're from? Let's look at our article. It says, "Should we remove our shoes upon entering a home?" That's the start-off question, and it's there to get us thinking a little bit, maybe get us discussing our different attitudes and experiences. So, should we remove or take off our shoes upon entering? You could also say when entering or when you enter a home. So, you come to the front door, you knock on the door, or you open the door. It's your own home. Is your first thing to do take off your shoes, or do you just walk into the house wearing the same shoes you were wearing outside? The article goes on to say, for some, the answer is a resounding. Sounding yes, yes, we should remove our shoes upon entering a home. While for others, the best approach is far from straightforward. Interesting. So for some people, there it's a resounding yes. If something is resounding, if you hear resounding cheers, or if you make a suggestion and it's responded to with a resounding no, that is a very strong, very loud, very powerful kind of unanimous. It's like almost everyone agrees that yes, this is a great thing. No, this is a terrible thing. Or hooray! We are very excited that、uh, our team has scored a goal. So there would be resounding cheers in the audience, or something like that. So for some, it's a very strong, confident yes. Most people in those cultures would say yes, but for others, it's a mixed message. It's far from straightforward. Yep.、Uh, for others, of course, it's far from straightforward. If something's straightforward, it's easy to understand. There's no debate about it. And yes, indeed, here in Taiwan, of course, you would. Remove your shoes when entering someone's home. That goes without saying. But yes, in other places, it's far from straightforward. It's a little bit more complicated. Practices vary from location to location, even within a single.
single country.、Hmm. So we're talking about the practice, or practices in the plural, of removing your shoes before you enter someone's home and wearing slippers when you're there. And it varies. It's different from location to location, and it even varies within a single country. Absolutely, practices here, of course, is not talking about violin practice or basketball practice. What we're talking about here are cultural traditions, normal ways of behavior, normal customs, things like that. So there you go. It's far from straightforward, and even in some countries, it changes. It varies. I guess that's kind of like what we were talking about in your part of America. In the winter, you would take them off, and、mm. the summer, you wouldn't. But of course, if you lived in Florida or a warmer part of the country where there is no snow, usually not a lot of rain too, you might leave them on all the time. And that's all within one country. Let's have a look at the middle part, the second part of our article, and then we'll come back to talk about it. In many Asian countries, it's standard practice to remove one's outdoor shoes at the entrance to a home, a practice considered especially polite when visiting others. In Japan and Taiwan, it's customary to wear slippers indoors, while in South Korea, it's more common to go barefoot or wear socks. Additionally, in other Asian nations, from Saudi Arabia to Malaysia, people remove their shoes before entering not only homes but also houses of worship. By contrast, there's no tradition of removing shoes upon entering a house or religious site in various European countries, including Ireland, France, and Spain, among others. The question is more contentious in the U.S. There, one survey found. That 63% of respondents take off their shoes at home, but out of politeness, only 24% ask guests to follow suit. Second part, we see the word customary, meaning usual or traditional. For example, Brandon had always thought it was customary to buy a bottle of wine for the host who invites you. Brandon 总是认为买瓶红酒送给邀请你的人是个习俗，或是 It is customary to celebrate Easter in the U.S. with an Easter egg hunt. 在美国寻找复活节彩蛋来庆祝复活节是个习俗。再来看到副词 additionally， 它的意思是另外或是此外。例如 ，Joe's new computer has a large screen. Additionally, it's quite thin. Joe 的新电脑有个大屏幕，此外它还相当的薄。再来介绍名词 worship， 表示敬拜、信奉或是崇拜。我们可以说 ，the worship of the sun was common in many ancient world religions。对太阳的崇拜在许多古世界的宗教中很常见。又或者说 ，we were invited to join in the act of worship， but we declined。我们被邀请参加敬拜活动，但我们拒绝了。接着看到名词 contrast， 它的意思是对比或是对照。例如。There is a sharp contrast between the director's early movies and his more recent work. 这位导演早期的电影和最近的作品有明显的对比。再来看到形容词 contentious， 指的是有争议的或是引起争议的。举例来说 ，The president made a contentious decision to raise taxes. 该总统做出一项征税的争议性决定。又或者说 ，The new budget was one of the more contentious issues on the agenda. 新预算方案是议程中较具争议性的议题。继续看到名词 percent， 表示百分之点点点。例如 ，There was a twenty percent decrease in the town's population over the last five years. 该城镇的人口在过去五年来减少百分之二十。最后看到名词 respondent， 表示受访者或是应答者、答复者。我们可以说 ，When the policeman asked a group of people a question, there was only one respondent. 当远景问这群人一个问题时，只有一个应答者。Okay, so let's focus here in Asia. In many Asian countries, which of course would include Japan, Korea, China,、mm. Thailand, etc., and Taiwan, in many Asian countries, it's standard practice to remove one's outdoor shoes at the entrance to a home, a practice considered especially polite when visiting others. It does seem reasonable. Of course, before I came to Taiwan, I was not used to that pattern or that practice、mm -hmm. of removing my shoes before entering someone's home. 
but I quickly adapted to that tradition and actually found it quite logical. Yes, why would someone let someone else wear their dirty shoes inside when they've been walking around on sidewalks and maybe stepping in puddles and things like that? It was perfectly reasonable. Absolutely, and a lot of the shoes here are designed to be slipped on and slipped off, so it's very convenient. You don't have to fiddle with all those laces and long boots like you might have to in other parts of the world. So it's very polite when visiting others. It's considered polite and it's considered normal and expected, really, to take your shoes off in Asian countries. Let's get specific. It says in Japan and Taiwan, it's customary to wear slippers indoors, while in South Korea, it's more common to go barefoot or wear socks. Interesting. I didn't know about that slight、mm. variation in indoor footwear. So there you are in Japan and Taiwan. It's customary. That means it's kind of usual. It's expected. This is the normal thing that you would expect to happen in that country or in that culture. So that's the custom. That's the usual practice to wear slippers indoors in Japan and Taiwan. We have slipper shelves. You can buy slippers, very cheap, easy slip-on shoes, almost anywhere. I think even Seven Eleven sells them, and you know, local hardware stores, supermarkets. You can buy them almost anywhere. So that's what we do here, and also in Japan. Well, in South Korea, it's more common to go barefoot or wear socks. Very, very interesting. So in South Korea, where it does snow, it does get cold in the winter, but you'll leave your shoes, maybe your winter boots, at the front door, and you won't have some slippers there, possibly waiting for you. You can just come in barefoot, with naked feet, not even wearing socks, as you might in the summertime if you're wearing sandals or if a lady is wearing high heel shoes or something. They might not wear socks, or if you have your socks on, that is okay. I think one thing to consider is that in South Korea they have heat. Heated floors in the winter, don't True, they? They、yeah. have that very special heated floor hypocost system, so that might make it actually quite comfortable to have socks on and a nice warm floor under your feet on a cold winter day in Korea. Slippers not expected. Sounds inviting. Maybe I should make plans to travel、mm. to Korea this winter just to feel the warm floors there. But again, we've got this term barefoot. We use the term barefoot to describe the situation when you're not wearing any shoes or socks. You are barefoot. You can go barefoot in the park, for example, or barefoot on the grass if you are having a picnic. Because in that particular case, there weren't a lot of sharp objects on the lawn.、True. It was、uh, real easy to do that. And yes, that's the custom in South Korea. Additionally, or also in other Asian nations, from Saudi Arabia to Malaysia, people remove their shoes before entering not only homes but also houses of worship. So this is the custom. In other countries in Asia, we've got a range here, all the way in the、uh, west. Of Asia, Saudi Arabia, spreading all the way down to Malaysia. In some of these places, there is the tradition of not only removing your shoes in someone's home, but also removing them when you go into a temple or a mosque or a synagogue or whatever. Absolutely, I remember the first time I went to a mosque in Kenya, in Nairobi. I had to take my shoes off, and there was a whole bunch of shoes all lined up very neatly on the steps. It was quite a unique experience for me. I'd never done that before. And of course, worship is when you pray, when you do religious rituals, when you go to church or temple, when you make offerings, things like that. Any time you're sort of having a conversation with God or engaging in some kind of religious spiritual activity, you could describe that as worship. And houses of worship is a good general term for lots of different types of buildings with different names, right? Christian churches, Jewish synagogues, Muslim mosques. So we just call them houses of worship. Buddhist temples, Shinto shrines, as well. Let's go on to the next paragraph. It says, by contrast, there's no tradition of removing shoes upon entering a house or religious site in various European countries, including Ireland, France, and Spain, among others. So there, by contrast, sort of showing the big difference between different parts of the world. So we know that in Asia, taking off shoes in homes or houses of worship is common. By contrast, in sort of opposition to show you the 
opposite attitude. There's no tradition of removing shoes upon or when entering a house or religious site in various European countries. And they list Ireland, France, and Spain. And you can probably include most other European countries on that list. So yes, if you're visiting someone in the UK, France, Sweden, Germany, Ireland, and Spain, also on the list, you are not expected to take your shoes off. And as far as I know, in Catholic churches or Protestant churches in Europe, also taking off your shoes is not the custom. You can wear your shoes again. I think the weather has a big part to do with this, right? Snow, rain, colder temperatures. Cold stone floors of a church in bare feet. Oh my gosh, that could lead to sickness and illness or something like that. Now let's turn our attention to the new world. It says the question is more contentious in the U.S. We've kind of discussed this a little bit already, but yeah, in America and the U.S. and we can probably include Canada in this as well. It's more contentious, kind of controversial. It's not as clear cut. There will be different opinions on this, maybe even strong opinions on this. So. So it's not sort of something you can assume to follow certain rules, even within the country. So there's definitely more disagreement on this topic in the U.S. Right.、Uh, for example, I could say gun control is a contentious Ooh, issue in the United States. Some people think we should have gun control; others think、uh, we should not have gun control. But、uh, this particular issue of removing your shoes in someone's home is contentious. They argue about this. There in the U.S., one survey found that 60. 3% of respondents take off their shoes at home, but out of politeness, only 24% ask guests to follow suit. So I don't know if this is referring to people just taking off their shoes when they go to their own homes. I know that's something I did because who wants to keep wearing their shoes when you're home? You want to kick off your shoes, sit back and relax. Sixty-three percent of people said yes, I do take my shoes off when I go home, and of course, percent is a part of one hundred, a ratio of a number to the number one hundred in order to figure out how much of something there is in a certain sample. So yes, sixty-three percent of respondents. To the survey said that they take off their shoes at home. Now, a survey, of course, is when they ask people questions and then they try to come to some conclusions or find some information based on that survey. Do you take your shoes off at home or do you not? They ask maybe a thousand people or something like that, and then they tally the results. Well, if you are asked that question, you are a respondent, a person who responds to that survey. You give an answer to their question. Exactly right. So that's interesting. Twenty-four percent will ask guests. To follow suit, follow suit basically means to do as I do or to do as they do, to copy their behavior or to basically do the same thing. So if you're having guests over, you might not ask them to take their shoes off, even if you would in your own home. That's partly out of politeness and maybe also convenience. Certain people might not want to walk around in their bare feet or in socks or something like that. So there you go. You can't expect people to necessarily do it at home, even if you. Do and it might not be polite to push the issue if you're having guests over. All right, let's take a look at the final part of our article. So there seems to be no single right answer to the question posed above. In fact, different preferences are largely a matter of culture. Okay, so here's the final paragraph for today. It says, "So there seems to be no single right or correct answer to the question posed above. In fact, different preferences are largely a matter of culture. So there's no real right or correct answer to this question. There's no correct answer. You just have to figure out the、uh, customs and traditions in the country that you're visiting. And yes, in fact, to be truthful, different preferences are largely a matter or a concern of culture." Again, it depends on where you are and whose house you're in, and as we said before, it varies from country to country, and it might even vary from region to region inside the same country. That's absolutely right, or season to season, depending on how much snow there is or rain on the ground. All right, well, that's all the time we have for our article. Let's go over to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提出一个问题，他说。
Should we remove our shoes upon entering a home? 我们进入家门时该脱鞋吗 ？Upon entering a home 就可以表达一进家门就怎么样怎么样的语义。那我们来介绍这样的用法 ，upon 或者是 on 加上名词或动名词，逗号主词加动词，这样的句型可以表达一怎么样就怎么样。那么 upon 或是 on 去接名词或动名词，这部分可以摆在主要子句之前或是之后，只是要特别注意，以 upon 加动名词或者是 on 加动名词时，动作的主词必须跟主要子句的主词一致，像是 Pam burst into tears。On hearing the news, Pam 一听到消息就突然哭了起来。例句里面这个 on 后面是接动名词 hearing， 那这个动作的主词就会是 Pam， 跟主要子句的主词是同一人哦。另外还有一些常见的句型，也可以用来表达一怎么样就怎么样，像 as soon as 加主词加动词，逗号主词加动词。那其中的 as soon as 也可以换作是 once, the minute, the moment 等等来引导这个时间副词子句。举例来说 ，I'll text you once I get there. 我一到那里就会传讯息给你的。好，那么课文第二部分提到了美国的情况。他写说，一项调查发现，百分之六十三的受访者在家会脱鞋，但出于礼貌，只有百分之二十四的人会要求客人比照办理。那文中用到单字 respondent 来表达受访者，它还有那种应答者、答复者的意思。而这个字是来自动词 respond。我们来学习它的字首字根。看到 s p o n d s p o n s 或者是 s p o u 这一类字根呢，表示保证、承诺或者是答复的意思。像 spouse 配偶，我们就可以用两人承诺、互许终身来联想这个 s p o u 这个字根就带有承诺的语义。那么在 respond 这个字当中，它的字首 r e 表示回复 ，s p o n d 表示应允答复。合在一起 ，respond 就是回应回答的意思喽。这边补充几个有这一类字根的单字，第一个是 sponsor， 它的字根 s p o n s 表示承诺 ，o r 是人。其实这个字原本是指这个教父教母啊，在这个基督教洗礼仪式当中，教父教母就像是受洗者的保证人，所以这个字呢带有那种许下神圣承诺的语义。后来才衍生出其他意思，像是保证人啊、赞助者或是赞助商这样。第二个补充的是 despondent， 它的字首 d e 表示离开 ，s p o n d 表示承诺 ，e n t 是形容词字尾。当对方背离承诺、违背承诺时，会让人感到失望、难过嘛？也许可以用这样的方式去联想到 despondent， 它表示郁闷的、消沉的或是灰心沮丧的。好，那以上今天重点整理，我们来回顾这些单字吧。Straightforward. Leslie found the instructions for putting the table together to be fairly straightforward. Additionally, Tyrone finished his essay a week early. Additionally, he already completed most of his math homework. Worship. Every Sunday morning, the church bells ring out, calling the people of the town to gather for worship. Contrast. Megan is shy. Aaron, by contrast, likes to be the center of attention. Percent. The store is offering a discount of 25 percent for all winter clothing items. Respondent. Every survey respondent was interviewed individually to ensure that their views were fully understood. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.